Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Jimmy here. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Today, we're gonna dive into a topic that I've been getting some emails about and it's, it's super important because it involves risk, risk level, and how to scale it. So if you're starting to day trade or you've been day trading for a little bit and you've been using, say, a paper trading account and you're not sure how to go live or if you do go live, how much do you risk per trade? If that's you, if you're in that area right now and you're struggling with that, with that risk unit level, this video is probably for you. So what I wanna dive into is just to talk a little bit about how to scale your risk when you're trading. Obviously, when you're learning about a new platform and you're just trying to get the feel for things, you wanna be in a paper trading account because that can afford you opportunities to learn, you know, what all the buttons do, you know, if I hit the flatten, what happens? If I try to reverse my position, what happens? And you just learn the ins and outs of the platform. But once you get beyond that, and you're starting to put on live trades, it's a whole different ballgame. And when I get emails about this, about how much to risk per trade, the first question I say is, what is your strategy's back-tested edge? What's your win rate? And a lot of times people don't know the answer to that. And that's, I think the biggest problem is people haven't back-tested. They just wanna jump right into the live markets. And so what I recommend is back-testing 50 to 100 times. I know many of you have probably heard this over and over and over, and if you're in our private Facebook group, I'm sure you've heard this a bazillion times, but it's super important because you don't wanna trade sort of a pseudo strategy. You wanna make sure that what you're doing actually has an edge or else you're just wasting your time and, and really you're kinda of just gambling because if you go to the casino and play blackjack or you shoot craps, you're playing games that have an edge against you. And when you don't know what your edge is, you might have one against you and you might just be doing the equivalent of, of playing cards. So my first recommendation is you should be calculating your share size based on your risk level. Now your risk level is your R value. And I'm gonna post a video here. This is just a helpful video to just to get an idea about risk and about strategy and about how to formulate a trading plan. But if you have a risk value of say $10, then that risk value, you're gonna divide that number by whatever stop loss you choose to use. And I'll give a little example right here. If you go ahead and have a $10 risk amount, and let's say you want to have a 50 cent stop loss, then you can see right here, that's how many shares you should buy right there. That's gonna be 20 shares. So this is a very easy thing to do, and this allows you to trade stocks like Tesla. Um, you could trade Amazon this way because you will just have a much larger stop loss which will translate into doing that division and having a much lower share size than if you were trading something like Facebook or Twitter, or something like that. So first of all, get to know how to do that division quickly so that you know how many shares that you're going to be buying when you do take an entry. Now, let's say you have your strategy back tested, you're all good to go there, and you now are saying, okay, I need to figure out how much to risk per trade because I've back tested my strategy. Here's an easy plan I'm gonna give you right now that's super simple to follow. It's goal-based. You can follow it on a calendar. It's made my life way easier and I'm just progressively following this plan month after month. And that is start with $10. If you're new to trading and you came out of a paper account, you just got a strategy back tested, you know you have an edge and you're ready to start trading in the live markets, then I recommend start trading with $10 risk. And I know that sounds crazy, but you're gonna be so thankful because let's say that your strategy, you found an edge, but maybe it was vulnerable to a pocket in the market. Like what if your strategy is vulnerable to the fact that it only works in a hard bull market? That's a problem. Or it only works in downtrends. And maybe you just happen to test you know, your 50 trades clustered in a downtrend. It's nice to win slowly rather than losing quickly. So risk $10, divide 10 by your stop loss. That'll give you the number of shares that you need to use and just always use a bracket. That will put in your target 
and your stop loss. Now, as far as your target goes, and I know I'm kind of wandering off topic here, but you wanna go ahead and just pick something that's greater than one to one. I recommend 1.5 or two to one, that's the ratio, 1.5 to one or two to one. Those are great places to start. So once you start with that, go $10 risk and, and set a goal. Write it down on a piece of paper, read it every morning before you trade, and this paper should say, do not break your plan. Have your plan right, written out so that you have all your steps. And then you have your risk unit, $10. You're using $10 risk only for the entire month. So it's a great time to start because it's just the second day of October. So trade the entire month of October at $10 risk. And on November 1st, or let's say December 31st, you're eating all your candy from Halloween and hanging out at the house and you're, you're evaluating your trades because you put all your trades into a spreadsheet or you upload them to traderview.com. You have it do all your metrics. And let's say that after 30 days, let's say you get in you know, 30 to 50 trades in that time frame using $10 risk. If you still have an edge, then go from 10 to $25. The entire month of November, $25. If that goes well, then I recommend in December, if you still have that edge and things are still looking good, go to 50. And then from 50, go to 100, 150, 200, 250. Follow that sequence. And the only reason I'm recommending that is because that's what I did. I started at $10. I went from 10 to 25, 25 to 50, 50. I even went 50 to 75 and then 100. And then from there, I've gone from 100 to 150. And then I just, starting in October, am now using a $200 R value. So I'm risking one unit, which is 200, to make a two to one ratio for me, which means that if I win my trade, I make 400. If I lose my trade, I lose that 200. So that's where I am now with plans to go to 250 in November, 300 in December, and then rolling around January 1, you guessed it, 350 per trade. So that's a great way to scale your trades. I recommend in the very beginning, going very slowly from 10 to 25, going in $25 increments until you hit 100. Then from 100, go 100 to 150, 150 to 200, and that's kind of a good way to go. You can comment below and ask me questions. If you have a specific scenario set up where, you know, maybe you're already, maybe you have a strategy and you're already trading, you know, $50 risk and you've been doing it for a long time, um, you know, we can talk about maybe what your risk level should be, but the key is your metrics. As long as you're using something like TraderView, and, and TraderView is not sponsoring this video, they don't promote anything on my channel, it's just what I use. They'll give you 100 free trades per month that you can upload to the platform. And it's TraderView as in V-U-E, not V-I-E-W, TraderView.com. And it's wonderful because 100 trades a month is their free package and you can see all kinds of metrics. And then if you upgrade to $30 a month, you can just ninja cut up all your trades into crazy metrics, which can help aid your trades and help you modify and make your trading plan or trading strategy even better. So I recommend going slow, incrementally, month after month. And it's nice because when you set a goal on a month to month basis, you start on the first, you end on the whatever the last day of the month happens to be. And then once that's done, you can pat yourself on the back and say, I follow my trading plan. I did not break my risk levels. So everything stayed intact. You won. You count how many R's you collected that month. And then once you know after one or two months how many R's you're averaging, you can kind of loosely look at that number and say, if I scaled that to 400, 500, $1,000 per R, what could that mean if I'm scaling it out? And that's a pretty exciting thing. This past month in September, I'll tell you how many R's I came up with. Um, I traded September 1st through through the end of the month, the, every day of the month that was open for trading, I traded at, 100, at $150 R value. Now, I trade very little. I take one trade in the morning, and if it wins, I'm done for the day. If it loses, there's a second trade that could be triggered. So I take a max of two trades a day, with a minimum of one a day. And I ended up that month accumulating 16 R's. So less than one R per day, but beautiful because if you scale that out, like imagine if my R value were $1,000, that's a $16,000 month. 
my hour value was $500. That's an $8,000 a month just from these one or two trades in the morning. You know, this is just a little piece of what I do for trading. So it's really encouraging because you can do the math and scale it and see the potential as long as you're keeping that edge. Now, let's say you get four months, five months in, you're trading $200, $250 risk, and your metrics are still coming back with an edge. That's really exciting for you as a trader because you're solidifying, you're getting a, the, the application of the law of large numbers. If you accumulate four, five, 600 trades and you still have a 55% win rate or a 60% win rate or whatever it happens to be, you know, with a two to one reward to risk ratio, which I trade with, I only have to be right 34% of the time to actually make money. 33.3333 is break even for me. So it's really nice to know that if I'm trading in the 50s after hundreds of occurrences, the chances are I'm gonna be holding up for the future down the road, and which would allow me to increase my risk incrementally. Now, here's the downside of scaling too quickly. This actually happened this month. So I scaled from 150 to 200, and the first occurrence on October 1st, I took a loser. Now, what if you would have been trading $200 a trade for months and months and months and months, and you were doing great, and you had an edge, and then you thought, okay, I'm gonna go big time now, and you decide to go $5,000 R, all of a sudden out of nowhere, and this sounds crazy, but people do this. You decide, I'm gonna go 5,000 R, and you lose the first three trades. Now you just wiped out everything you've done in the past, and you're starting over completely. And you may not be able to start over. You may have completely blown your account. So you gotta scale slowly and incrementally. You gotta just ratchet it up one click at a time because if you overdo it, you never know when that little cluster of losers gonna happen. A Couple weeks ago, I took four trades in a row, lost. One, two, three, four, all losers. Now imagine if I would have scaled up right before that cluster hit. You don't know when your runs of wins and your runs of losses are gonna occur. Now, if I would have hit a run of 10 winners in a row and I scaled to 5,000 on R, of course that would have been amazing and I'd have been way up and probably way overconfident. But what if you hit that cluster of losers? That's gonna take you out of the game and that's what you don't want. So that's why I'm, I'm preaching this to everyone because I get a lot of emails and I get a lot of comments down in the comment section about people that are, are making 50% on their account in one day and it, that's just, that's not gonna work. That's just huge, that's too much. If you're, if you're making 50% of your account value in a day, it's just way too much size. Um, you know, they, people question when people say they make a 1% a day. So the longevity or the ability to maintain day in and day out of making 50% on your account in a day, you know some big losses are coming with that. So we all trade differently. There's no one right way to trade, but I will say you gotta stay small and you gotta make your moves slowly. You gotta slowly turn up the heat. That way you don't get caught in a cluster of losers that'll take you out of the trading game. So. Drop questions below. If you're new, subscribe. Hit the YouTube banner for the Facebook link to our private group and send me a request to join. We'd love to have you. And if you have any specific questions or need a little coaching on how to scale your trades, how to increase your risk slowly and safely, let me know. I'd love to help out. It's super important. We'll see you next time.